Welcome back, everyone. This is Super Kelly Brothers Podcast, episode 88. My name's Sloan Kelly. My name's Jody Kelly. 88 miles per hour. Uh, per hour? <clears throat> sure. 88 miles per hour is like how fast style. Marty. Yeah, is how fast Marty goes. In Back to the Future. Oh, is this episode 88? It is, yeah. All right, I've just woke up. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Missed the previous 87 episodes. <laughs> if, you have, one, then. if you have, what you should probably do is you should hit the subscribe button and then you'll get a notification bell and all that good stuff. And you get timely reminders of when we do post an episode up. So you'll never have to miss an episode in the future. What a or great to, segue. Or Brilliant Sloan. That's the best yet. It is. I knew this would be good. Okay. Or go to our website also. And get all the podcasts from way back. All way back when, even back to our original uh, pilot episode, which is called O Solo Mio, where we talk about the solo movie, which I I need to go back and listen to because I'm pretty sure that we didn't like it when we first saw it. There's one for you. It wasn't a video. It wasn't a video, no. It's audio. So all the audio is back up. And you can can get them. They're all in the, the, the podcast as well as an RSS feed. Uh, as well as if you're listening to iTunes, you can give us a five star rating. That'd be awesome. Help the channel out. Uh, get the get the uh, get the momentum going. Get some more uh, listeners, viewers. Uh, that'd Likers, be, that'd be great as well. Likers as well. Yeah, subscribers. It's always good. Yeah. Helps the channel. Friends, Boosts friends us of the up channel. In there, friends that we have several friends of the channel. James Baker, obviously from uh, the fabulous Baker Goss. Um, uh-huh. He's he's been on a few times. Um, yeah. on this on this podcast, and he also does the the other the live show that we do as well, which is uh, um, we'll do it live, uh-huh. gaining we'll momentum. Do it, we'll do it live, gaining momentum. Yes, yeah, mm-hmm. We've got quite a few uh, viewers. I think we got two more subscribers out of that. I think we did actually. Yeah, not bad. Every yeah. everyone counts. James's dad and uh, his brother. His brother. <laughs> <laughs> I think it probably was James, James' family. Yeah. So we'll have all, all the bakers. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So by the time we got, you know, thank you to James's family. Yes. Uh-huh. We need more families. We need more families to get but my fam- What about my family? I don't you know. know. What about your family? Um, we have the same family. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we're the Kelly brothers. Damn it. <laughs> anyway. How's your week been? Really? How's your week been anyway? Uh, pretty unmemorable, really. Okay. Not not really done much. It's quite a heavy weekend, right enough. Um, we uh, Friday, Friday we had a bit of a late one in Evelyn, mm-hmm. and then Saturday we were over at the uh, over at Marks, who we, who gets name checked a lot in this. I was telling that and that is his name checked a lot because he was the only one watching. Um, to begin with, the live oh, on thir- on Thursday, we on, uh, Wednesday. On Thursday. Wednesday, sorry, Wednesday. I no, yeah. just agree with whatever you say. And um, <laughs> and uh, so I was saying that, and and uh, so James was there as well. And um, with far too much to drink, he brought the whiskey out and all that. It was just oh dear, it was messy. I did that. I did that <clears> last <throat> night. I did that last night, which is why I'm now currently on root beer. Uh, it's not. It's not a good idea on top of beers. Mm-mm. No, no, because the first the first time you have a, the first hit of whiskey you get, you're like, oh, I don't know, I don't think this is a good idea. Then the second one, it's like, eh, it's quite warming. And then by the third one, by the yeah. third sip, you're like, I could do another couple of glasses of these, and it's it's yeah. a slippery, slippery yeah. slope whiskey. It's very tasty though, very very yes. tasty. Yeah, um, I was on Bowmore last night. I don't even drink Bowmore. That's the only one I've got. I I used to have a cabinet full of, it, but uh, but because. Hardly anyone's come over. They haven't brought me whiskey. <laughs> you gradually worked your way through it. So I've gradually worked my way through it. It's only taken me two weeks. Um. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's different times, isn't it? Oh, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm not driving. I do like the I, I do like the idea of a whiskey, though. You know, just coming in, having a whiskey, yeah. big big chunks of ice. Oh yeah. yeah. Do you know what I want to get? I'd love to get the um, you know the Death Star. Ice cube maker thing you can get. Oh yeah, yeah. And it's, it's, it's like a mold. It's not like a gold, gold size. That's huge. You put some whiskey in that. 
I'd be, I'd be scared. Of, I'd be scared of doing that. You know that bit where you get the last drop of whiskey, and all of a sudden that goes in, and you're like, <laughs> you choked to death. <laughs> you choked to death in a Death Star. Yeah. What a way to go! What a way to go! <laughs> Folk think you're getting forced choked by Lord Vader. If you try to melt it really quickly in your throat, <laughs> just massaging it like that to get the heat. You know in. What you would do? Do you know what to do? Just, just uh, calmly water. make yourself a coffee. Calmly <laughs> make yourself <laughs> a coffee. Uh huh. Uh, that might work. While you're, while you're you know, panicking and slowly inside. dying. <laughs> yeah. Just to melt it, get it down there. And the weird thing is, they'd do an autopsy and they wouldn't know what the, 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 the they'd know it was this fixation, but they'd be like, well, how did he do it? How did, how did he die? Is that the perfect murder? Uh, could be. Was there not a Colombo episode with icicles? There was a, there was a Roald Dahl, uh, Tales of the Unexpected, and it was um, a, a leg of lamb, a frozen leg of lamb. That was the murder weapon. And the the policemen come and stuff like that, and uh, she's roasting the she murders her husband and uh -huh. roasts the the lamb, and then um, the police are there to investigate, and they're like, the only thing we need to do is find the murder weapon, um, but she invites them for, she's like, would you like to stay for dinner? And they're like <laughs> eating the lamb, and then um, and he goes, it could be right under our nose, and we don't even know it. Just taking a bite of the lamb and all that. <laughs> more, we, more mint sauce. I love, I love uh, his wee short stories. They're fantastic. They are good, yeah. Mm -hmm. Tales of Unexpected was a good show. Yeah, well, that was one of them. Aye, aye. I bought a, a big kind of compendium. It was a podcast. People can't see this, but it was about, about a three-inch three inch thick book mm -hmm. of all the short stories that he did. Oh, really? Um, but they were they were billed under Tales of Unexpected, but they, they were first released Excuse me. in three, three different books, I think, and then they made them into Tales of Unexpected. Oh, I did not know that. Fact fans. I can't remember the names of the books, but anyway. Um, hmm. I think I had one of the original ones as well before it, before the campaign, you know, they compiled it all into the mm -hmm. Tales of Unexpected book. But, um, no. The only one I, I vaguely remember is a guy that was terrified of the rabbits. <laughs> he, just, he, kept, he kept on falling asleep with these, these dreams of these rabbits coming out of me, the teeth. Yeah. yeah. On a Twilight Zone, no. No, I'm sure it was. I'm sure it was Tales of the Unexpected because they all had British accents. That's how you can tell it was Tales of the Unexpected. That and the fact it's like, do 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 he, had, he adapted um, one of Roald Dahl's the books, uh, sorry, short stories for that, mm -hmm. that movie, and it was about the gambler that had the, the missing finger. Remember? Okay, I'm vague. I remember. Um, and he, I, I don't um, think I saw the, the four rooms thing. Was that the one? Was that the one with uh, Tim Roth as a bellhop? Yeah, it was. Aye, that's right. Okay, no, I never saw that one. Aye, aye, pretty good. Mm -hmm. I can't remember who the other directors were. I'm not sure. Robert Rodriguez? That would be a good guess. It would be a good guess, but I don't think he was at that uh, point. Maybe. Four rooms? Four rooms, yeah. Fact checking on the fly. 1995, that came out. 25 years one ago. Of the, one of the directors. Quarter century. The guy that did Killing Zoe, Richard or Roger Avery, is it? Roger. Um. Uh. No, um, Chuck Jones did the animation sequences uncredited. Oh, really? uh, Robert Rodriguez did the the misbehavior misbehaviors. Do one of them, okay? Yeah, Quentin Tarantino, the man from Hollywood. Andre Rockwell did the wrong man, and Alison Anders did the missing ingredient. All right, okay. Um, so it's a wee uh, hidden hidden gem for Tarantino. That one. Yeah. You know. It's, uh, Tarantino fans out there, you probably yeah. all know about that. that I, I didn't know that. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, interesting! The the directors all wrote the 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 segments. Yeah, but he adapted his though. Tarantino. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Oh, that's interesting. 
Let me need to check that one. Yeah. It's probably worth watching again, actually. Yeah. Yeah, sounds good. 25 years ago, though. Wow. That's scary. 1995, it came out. That is scary. I know. I remember, it, I remember it being advertised. I think I saw it in film 1995. Jeez, Barry Norman. Uh, it might have been Jonathan Ross at that point. But yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't yeah, know. Really Check your facts there, fans. I don't, I'm not entirely sure if it was. Maybe it was Maybe it was old Baza. I get my reviews from um, um, Mark Kermode these days. Oh, do you? He doesn't like anything, though. It, it does now. It seems to have mellowed. Is I used he? to think he was like that. Uh, but he, he seems to have mellowed, yeah. He likes he's, Tenet, but he didn't understand it. He's the kind of guy that we go, like, good fellas, it's okay. <laughs> uh, no, no, not that. But I know what you mean. In the past, he's been a bit kind of controversial, but so have you right enough. <laughs> your, your thoughts. Controversial on my own lunchtime. Aye, exactly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Occasionally. <laughs> Is this my thoughts on Rise of Skywalker? Well, no, not really. Or certain that one. reboots? No, that one. Okay. If you haven't seen our reboots, chat. You should check that out, yes. That was, oh, that was last Wednesday. Oh, in fact, we've still got the... We've still got the... Um, oh, we're good for episodes. <laughs> we've got about nine in the pipeline, haven't we? I think so, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. if you want to... Mm-hmm. You can still watch the full episode of uh, We'll Do It Live. Um, but the the cut down versions, the segments that we take out, uh, I haven't even edited them together yet. So I, I will edit them, but we still have uh, top five iconic females. Um, and we actually have a, an, another guest on there, Jamie McKeown. Uh, yep. She's on talking... Uh, friend of the show. Friend of the show. Uh, she's on talking uh, top five female iconic female characters in pop mm-hmm. culture. It's the shortest sentence that we could get trying to encapsulate everything that we wanted about that subject, but yeah, absolutely. Um, mm-hmm. but yeah, yeah. Uh, um, also great episodes, and they're they're coming up soon. That's that's our top. I keep five. I keep, I keep uh, trying to pester Sloan to put three up three videos up a week, but he's not budging. I can't I can't do that, man. I can't I simply can't edit that fast. I know. I know. It takes me all my effort to, yeah. You know, anyway, it takes it. I've got I've got editing this show down to a fine art now, so it's yeah. I don't, happy I don't with think people appreciate actually the work that goes into putting a video up. It, it's a fair chunk of change, yeah. uh, time wise, because yeah. you got to get the you know the thumbnail ready and and then you got to do the for both things now. So we do, we do video and audio, so we've got to do that. Um, then you get the upload as well, but then you get the edit. Before that, editing, you've got editing, yeah. and then you've got the export exactly. from that. So you get the, uh, yeah. an export and a render. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a lot. It's a bit, lot of work. Bit yeah. of change. Yeah. If I could help you out, I would. And then it's we could right. put stuff up, but I don't have a, a, a fancy enough computer to do it. Well, you're posting stuff up on the Facebook page as well, so that helps. Yeah. Yeah. So Because you find like nuggets of news and then post that up. So that... that that kind of stuff helps as well. That keeps the content going on on Facebook page. Yeah, I'll do try. Not Today that, we're talking not shop. Not that hard. Not that hard. <laughs> I know. Eh, Sorry, but it helps. It's you know, it's it's all about the whole content thing. So I'm editing content, and you're putting news stories up there. So yeah. it all helps. It's growing very slowly. It's growing, yep. Yeah. Which is good. Thanks, everybody. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Thank you all. For your support. Don't forget to smash that like button, though. Smash it. Boom. Smash, smash the like button. Yeah. Um, so what have you been watching yeah. this week? Well. Shh. My phone. You need to switch your phones off. This. I know. Turn your phones off. I need to put that up as well. So I've got the subscribe yeah. button now. I've got the I've got the like button, and now I've got the silence your phones. It's like a movie theatre. Yeah. If anyone you went to the movie theatre these things. Get, get the hot dog jumping into the bun. Yeah, all that. We'll talk about that later on. Sausage party stuff. No, um, no. I have been watching The Last oh. Kingdom on Netflix. Who's that? Which, who's that? Who's which is, uh, I'm not sure how many seasons, it might be three or four, maybe. 
screen. I'm not sure. But we are kind of late to it. Um, I don't know. We were just flicking through, looking for something kind of that we liked and stumbled across it. It's a kind of um, Vikings versus the English thing. And oh, it's like a serious Norseman. Yeah, basically it is. I uh, basically a serious less, version of the Norseman. Less jokes, more more gritty, mm-hmm. uh, violent, um, sexy, all that stuff, all the good stuff. And um, it's um, really good, actually. We're okay. Three, three episodes onto the fourth episode. Um, so yeah, enjoying that. Okay. Uh, I don't know why I've never watched this before, but I started watching Ash versus Evil Dead. You ever watched? Oh it? yeah, I watched the first episode. I think. No. Again, not a huge horror guy, so. I don't know, like, but they're kind I of. I really like Ash. Goofy. They're kind of goofy though. Yeah. You like those movies, so you like the Evil oh, Dead, no, I love them. Army of Darkness, yeah. and all that. Yeah, I did. I, so I, like, you know, for for a guy who doesn't like horror movies, I, I did. I did really enjoy those movies, especially yeah. Army of Darkness. That was the the, yeah. the sort of it was the zenith of those those kind of goofy movies. Well, I would say it's more of a it's more of a continuation of the Army of Darkness goofiness. Oh than yeah, than it is uh-huh. the, the first two. Although the first two did have elements of that, but mm-hmm. um, it's more of a that you know. And he's yeah. been kind of he's been free of it for. Like decade, a decade or something, mm-hmm. and then um, he starts seeing. Well, you've seen the first episode. He starts seeing episode, people, yeah. their faces kind of change into these demons. And he's yeah. like, I've not experienced that for ages, and then he yeah. drags the, the book out again. Yeah. So yeah, um, I'll probably keep going with it. It seems quite good. <laughs> um, we our movie on on Friday was uh, Johnny English Reborn. Reborn. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, which, I like the first one. Do you know what? They're pretty good. They're enjoyable yeah. films. Um, yeah. We all enjoyed it as a family. Um, we actually went. Me and Danny went to see the, the the last the the latest one in the cinema. I think it was last year. He wanted to see it because it was Mr. Bean, and he was kind of fascinated yeah. the fact that it was Mr. Bean, but he was t- he was talking talking. Yeah. <laughs> wanted to go and see it, you know. Well, Mr. Bean doesn't really talk, and you know, and he's he just kind of it's all like a silent movie, isn't it? Yeah, he kind of just goes, Oh, you know, Mr. Bean, yeah, I know Mr. Bean. He doesn't really have any dialogue, yeah, so he's quite kind of taken by the fact he's got you know, he talks in Johnny Mm -hmm. English. So we've probably watched all three now, yeah. I think we've seen bits of Reborn before, but I couldn't remember a lot of it. Mm -hmm. Jillian Anderson's in it as well, is she? She just gets better and better, doesn't she? She does. She's a great actress. It's not necessarily what I meant, but <laughs> <laughs> she just looks fantastic. Um, did you finish the fall by any chance? Well, we did, die. Uh-huh. Yeah. What did you think of that? I it was did fantastic. you finish it all? Like yeah. both, both seasons? Three. There's three, Sloan. Oh, three seasons, sorry. Three. Three seasons. Not going there again. Not Chernobyl again. <laughs> <laughs> I watched that. I didn't watch that. Shudders, shudders a bit. I am um, kind of shuddering here as well. It's got a bit of a judder. Remember that commercial? A judder. It's got a bit of a judder. Do you remember that? The yeah. Bacardi commercial. Commercial with um, what's his name? The other half of Mighty Bush, not Noel. The other one. Um. Barrett. But what's his name? Julian. Julian. Julian Barrett. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's the guy that said it's got a bit of a judder. Oh. Fact. No. Oh, okay. I'm um, sorry. Continue. Well done, family. Obviously. Oh yeah. yeah we'll just blast. I was watching. Video. I was watching a couple of episodes of that this week as well. One of every, the Halloween ones. Every, pretty much every dinner time we watch like two or three. Mm-hmm. Um, Cobra Kai. Started watching the first, oh, yeah. first episode, um, which is really good. It just eases you right back into that atmosphere uh-huh. of uh, the eighties. Um, it's not set in the eighties because it's yeah. obviously modern. But it's, it, but it's uh, the same guys, though, isn't it? It's it's Ralph Macchio guys, and, and uh-huh. the 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 the, the low rent uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Get the other kind of guy like that. The, the I think, I think he's the guy well. I mean. uh-huh. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah he is. Yeah, yeah. The, the the guy that was in charge of the Cobra Kai. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was yeah. in charge of the gym or the dojo or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. He was the boss guy, mm-hmm. and he just beat up the other fella, Tommy. Oh, what was the bad guy's name? I don't know what the bad guy's name is. Was it Tommy? I've watched the first episode. I can't remember, but Nigel. Um, so he used to beat up Nigel because he got him wrong. You know, you know, <laughs> you know, that kid threw you around. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's really good. It's um, just I loved Critic Kid. You know, we all did, um, <clears throat> and it's a, a worthy successor of the the movies, definitely. Well, that's good. So far, I mean, only one episode in, but yeah. you just get the feeling that it's going to be good. You know. Yeah. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> also watched um, the on this just Netflix stuff, but I've also watched um, the first um, Lovecraft. Oh God, this is a Lovecraft world or something. That's basically HR, HP, HP Lovecraft. Okay. You no, know, as talking about uh, uh, Ash. But they've kind of made it into a, um, a universe of all his characters. And I think I've heard about this. Lovecraft, yeah. Con- Lovecraft Country, it's called. That's what it's called. So, country. Okay. Um, and it's good. It's good. Special effects are magic. Um, and it goes a bit mental at the end of the first episode, but yeah. We shall we shall carry on with that as well. Oh, it's on it's HBO. An H, H, HBO thing, but we get it in Sky Atlantic. All the HBO stuff. Mm-hmm. In fact, that's um, what uh, Jim, James was pointing out. That because uh, I was thinking, how am I going to get to see that? Um, uh, the, what, the Justice League, mm-hmm. you know, the, the special version, the Snyder Cut, because it's going to be in HBO streaming. But are we going to yeah. get that on on Sky Atlantic, if it's a streaming exclusive, I I don't know, but it, uh, this um, this Lovecraft Country thing um, is produced by JJ Abrams and Jordan Peele. Ah, right, okay. Because it's a it's a bad robot production, so that's right. interesting. I noticed that actually. Mm. That's um, yeah, it's really good. Uh, oh, Jamie Chung's in it as well. She played it. So for those of you who are going like. So, uh, Jamie Chung uh, played uh, Aimee in uh, X Men Destiny. There you go. All right, okay. So, anyway, that's it. That's me. Over to you. All right. Well, I watched uh, some some Netflix this week. Uh, I watched uh, I Am a Killer released. Which was a three-part mini. Oh, actually, this was going to ask. Uh, color of color of the space or color of space? Oh, color of space. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's out on Netflix over here. I don't know if it's out on Netflix in the UK. I've I've seen it. Because uh, that's an HP Lovecraft story, I think. That is, aye. Yeah. Um, yeah. With uh, it was Cage. Yeah. And he does a brilliant Nick Cage moment in it. Oh, does he? Um, throwing potatoes into a bin. I think, or okay. bananas into a bin, one of the two, but he gets over. He goes full Nick. Oh, does he? Full, full cage. Full full tilt uh, cage. And I'll tell you what, it's a good movie. It's great. Really good. Oh, is it? He's got, he's got some really good movies these, these days. Huh? <laughs> so the Sorcerer's Apprentice, you're including in that? <sighs> I tried, we tried watching that today. <laughs> and he's like, eh, let me, we should watch this later. <laughs> is that on Disney Plus? Yeah. I think I've watched that actually. Yeah, it's terrible. It's produced by Jerry Bruckheimer in a in a cash grab. I think that's the only way I can describe it. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so I watched uh, I'm a Killer released, which is about this uh, this guy who uh, accidentally uh, killed a guy uh, that worked in a in a subway shop, and he accidentally killed him by entering the subway shop, arguing with him, and then shooting him six times in the back. So it was clearly suicide. Jeez, uh, the 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 uh, the guy hid the gun after that, and uh, so anyway, so he ended up serving twenty odd years in prison. He was gonna get the it was in Texas, 
I think it was in Texas. I'm pretty sure it was Texas. Yeah, it was Texas. Uh, he was going to get the death penalty, and uh, he get it commuted to life in prison um, with a chance of parole after 20-something odd years. So this is his story of him coming out of prison. Um, mm-hmm. Could have been an hour and a half long documentary rather than the three hours that it was. Uh, there was a lot of filler in there. You didn't really... Yeah, there was a lot of filler, and you didn't really get a lot of substance. So that's why I'm like, you could probably cut this out. Three um, hours long. Yeah, it was three hour long episodes. All right, or oh, three hour long episodes. Yeah. So I, I think it probably could have been an hour and a half because yeah. there wasn't a lot of detail in there. It was like him coming out, how he got out, yeah. and then well, his life after getting out, and that was it. Wonder how- I sometimes wonder how they pick these things because we've said that before that mm-hmm. you know we should do one we should do a documentary pitch it to netflix and see if we can get like a couple of million and then just shoot it with our iphones and, and do a lot of repetition yeah, yeah just do a lot of repetition because uh-huh. i think that's quite kind important of, if you do repetition. Recall. yeah recall. like back to when i was talking about the iphone mm-hmm. and then we just repeat that mm-hmm. Because that's what we should do. We should pitch that to Netflix. Mm-hmm. A bit of conversation we had about an iPhone. And yeah. Then just keep going back to it. And just keep talking about it, about how that iPhone, we decided it was either going to be an Android phone or an iPhone. And we found oh. out that the iPhone, but we won't tell people that the iPhone doesn't overheat as much as the Android phone when you're shooting in 4K. I also have lots of droid, uh, drone shots of it. Oh no! You need tons of drone shots, and there was a drone lot shots. of drone shots in this. There was like ones at the prison. There was there was the usual one where it goes over the, you know, the 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 the, the winter scrubland scene where it does that thing and it pans over the trees yeah. and they're all just twigs. Mm-hmm. Did all that. You've stuff. got a drone, don't you? Exactly. I could do that. You could. You could do that. I could do that. Of course, I need a. I need to get a pilot's license, and I'm not joking. <laughs> oh. Talking of which, I watched the David Blaine thing that I was talking about. The, I watched that as well. Week. Ascension. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. On well, that was YouTube, a, it was a YouTube a... special. Yep. It was a three hour long thing as well. Yeah. That you're never getting back. I watched it. I watched it in fast forward. I watched it in fast forward as well. I, I just kept on I'm... clicking and like, right, when's it? Because it was like, it was talking to Marcus Brownlee uh, or MKBHD, as he's called on on, uh, on the YouTubes. Um, Marquis Brownlee, he does the he does technology things. He reviews Galaxy smartphones and Teslas and, and things like that. Uh, he's a great reviewer, fantastic interviewer as well. Uh, but he was talking to to this guy who was the manager or something, and he's asking all these questions. And the manager's like, I don't know. And then Marcus is like, Yeah, he's got like he's got an antenna here, and he's got one in his boot. And then they've got this thing where it depends on which one's closer to the Earth. Like, so if he's in free fall like that, then um, the antenna is going to be there because it's going to be closest. So it's going to it's going to uh, intelligently shift to that. This is what Marky, Marquez is saying. He's interviewing the guy. And then the guy, the manager goes like, what if he's in free fall? I'm like, <laughs> Marquez is, is interviewing you. <laughs> Why are you asking questions? Mm. He's giving you the answers. Uh so anyway, and then I just fast forwarded to the bit where he took off. He says he's biting. Oh, I mean, it was three hours long, so it was like explaining oh, well, all of that at the beginning. <laughs> but, but I watched, I watched Joe Rogan getting get interviewed by Joe Rogan, and explained all that anyway, all that stuff. So I was like, oh, I don't know if I really want, need to see yeah. that because I know. I kind of fast forwarded it onto the him ascending. Let's go ahead, Mark. He's got the information. He was supposed to go to thirty thousand feet. He went to 22 or something and then jumped. He went 20, just under 25, I think. And then, not that I'm saying it was a, you know, it was pretty amazing, like, what he did. Let's not poo okay. it, you know. I couldn't do it. You couldn't do well, it. I wouldn't have done it, no. Um, I, I can't claim a flight of stairs without getting a nosebleed. <laughs> <laughs> um, so no, it's all yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, um, you know, it was pretty, I mean, it was an amazing thing that he did, you know. And he does all these things, they're not tricks. And, and people go, oh, I bet it was a trick, I bet it wasn't he. Because he's a, a magician. Mm-hmm. But he actually did it, you know, there's cameras all over him. Um, he does these stunts now, you know. Yeah. But he was obsessed with Houdini. Um, 
David Blaine. Yeah. When he was younger. I think all magicians are obsessed with Houdini. Maybe. I think they all are. They've got this. But Houdini I mean, was like an escape artist, though. You know. He was an escapologist, Jody. Actually, yeah. Yeah, I think you'll find he was an escapologist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <Adida. Escapologist. laughs> was he? <laughs> I think that's what you call him anyway. I don't know. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. But that's what it was, you know, he did that. So he's kind of following the footsteps of doing these kind of crazy things. And, and he did his daughter there, you know, I thought, God, if, if anything goes wrong, I know. Be horrible. You know, she's, she's was there. he had put he had uh, pink balloons in the in the bunch of balloons he had because of his daughter. His daughter was like, "Oh, have you not got any pink ones in there?" He's like, "Yeah, we'll get some pink ones in there too." You know, bless him. If it went wrong, it would have been horrible. It God, would have been so glad it, it went well. You know, yeah. But I mean, it, how, how could it not have gone any other way? I mean, it, I mean, he. He, he was being held up by balloons, right? Which I thought he was holding on to, but it turns out there was like a crook in his arm or something like that. There was like a, a little step thing that he had on yeah. as well. That, and so it was yeah, just basically never, correct. Could could never, hey! There's no way you could... No. Well, he did at one point, he let go. Yeah. Well, he had to let go to like... Because he got the parachute the, thing. Parachute so then he, puts the, then he puts the parachute on, which I'm like, why didn't you just put that on at the start? Because he didn't want, he, he wanted it to look as if he was literally being li lifted by balloons, you know. He, okay. he, as he described it, he wanted it to be clean, without, you know. What if what him. what if he'd have pulled that like that and I'd have tied it off, and it would have just yeah. gone right by him. I know, there were so many things that could have went wrong, but I'm just saying that went just... right. Thank God. Yeah. I wasn't. I was like, okay, and then and then he landed, and he's all like, yeah. Let's do it again. You may wanna. Uh, yeah. Uh, so I watched the uh, I am <laughs> I am I am a killer released. I would watch it in fast forward. Uh, I don't know if I say has Netflix released that yet in the UK? Because I don't know if they've got it in Canada where you can watch things on fast Straight forward. Up. Yeah. No. I would have watched this on fast forward if that had been available. Right, okay. Uh, uh I also watched uh, Away, which is the new Hillary Swank vehicle oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. about uh, a team that goes to Mars, mm -hmm. uh, set in the near future, and um, or an alternate universe or whatever. But the base there was a moon base, uh, and so they set off from there. Um, this uh, this program suffers from from the the bad editor slash director trying to be too clever fatigue. That I've noticed that that is creeping into a lot of TV productions where they, 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 they set off at the start showing one thing, which may or may, may not be in the present, and then they cut back to something that may or may not be in the past, and then they cut back to something that may or may not be in the future, and then cut back to something that was in the past, and they keep doing this kind of thing until eventually at the end of it, you at the end of the episode, you get this whole story kind of thing. Uh, I hate that. Please stop doing that. If if that's your idea of directing, please stop doing it. It is not. It's just. It's not. It's not confusing. It's just tiring. Watching it's it jumping you about. Want... You mean jumping about? Jumping so you're about... a bit, and then it all ties in at the end. But it's 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 jumping about telling how you saw the events happening. Then it's jumping about to showing how, what I thought the events were happening. So you don't know what's right and what's wrong or what sequence of things. It wasn't until I was about 40 minutes into it. The episode was 55 minutes, I think. It wasn't until I was 45 minutes into it that I was like, all oh, right, okay, all of that happened in the past. All these flashbacks happened in the past. This is the present. This is them going. This is uh, the first episode you're talking This is the first this. episode. This is the first episode. Yeah. And at the end of it, Harry went, you're not watching that again, are you? <laughs> like, <All right. laughs> I'm like, I don't know. I, and then I'm like, I feel I have to because of the podcast. Because like it's one of those things where it's like you gotta you gotta watch the next episode. So I need to watch the next episode in mm -hmm. under the covers or something, like make sure no one's watched me or something and kind of you watch, can watch it on the phone. tablet or something. I don't know, just watch my phone. Yeah, I'll just watch like it in ten minutes. Yeah. I mean I um, I've kind of started watching things on the train and stuff. Yeah. 
just to you know catch up keep your hand in <laughs> um yeah. also watched um for all mankind which is on apple tv plus uh which is the alternative history um or alternative universe kind of the, like the the same as um i, I kind of like these things where it's uh perfect man in the high castle type thing mm. so in this one the russians get to the moon and not the americans oh. and so the americans get there second mm -hmm. and nixon wants nothing to do with them because he's gonna i don't i don't give medals for people who come in second place and, mm -hmm. and all this kind of stuff so he's, he's a bit peed off about it mm -hmm. um it was okay uh it was not as confusing as a way um but the ding for me, and I know the app's sitting there, it's it's right on my television. The ding for me, though, is when you go into the Apple TV app, you can't find a damn thing in there. Like, you, you just can't. It's the it's it's almost as bad as Prime. Actually, it probably is as bad as Prime. Um, the UI is just terrible. You can't find a damn thing in there. Um, they need to they need to give themselves a hard shake. It's just so not does good. it not continue if you've watched a, an episode and you go you, so you go back comes up continue you watching. Go, but no but you got to go back and find it it's that's the same problem that disney plus had when disney it's plus first started. Tried, yeah. like disney plus now has continue watching which is good mm -hmm. but it never yeah. used to have that it never used no, to have the bars either although the bars are still of contention with because it's like why not just make them red like everybody else does i mean youtube has red netflix has red they've got it as mm -hmm. blue so blue blends in with like most people don't have red unless it's, unless you're watching the black hole, uh, which I started watching. My God, that's not aged well. I don't think it was ever good though. People so, people talk about it, but I don't think it was ever good. The so black apparently, hole, I watched it. Apparently, there used, be, there used to be an overture that people used to play before movies, mm. which I didn't know about. Um, and so the the first black bit there's a there's a black bit of like five minutes of just black I know. and I know. it's music um mm -hmm. it, that's playing and that's the overture i thought like, my, i thought <laughs> netflix was broken at that point yeah so did i well uh, disney plus i'm like where's the picture Sorry, my disney plus no. like, where's the picture apparently this is how the print should have been this is how you get it in blu-ray or whatever and apparently it's the first time in a long time that it's been restored to its full thing and i'm like mm. get rid of it it's garbage it does not work Especially when you don't explain it. So the anyway, action um, sequences are very slow motion, aren't they? They are so well. bad. So slow. like the 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 bit with the robot Maximilian. I remember being vaguely terrified of of um, of of Maximilian or Max, whatever he's called. Uh, he just looks like this clunky piece of garbage now, with these like egg whisks. And then the whole thing with Bob and Vincent, where they go off and they 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 fire lasers. With this Darth Vader looking robot and oh, yeah. it's just garbage yeah. and it's you can totally see that the crew is still alive like they're all behind those masks yeah, like, yeah. It's, <laughs> it, I was I actually I started doing a mystery science theater thing I was I was I'm, I'm talking about and he's uh, sitting kind of half heartedly watching it with me and uh, <laughs> and and the, the the female scientist goes if uh, is my is my father still here? He goes, no, unfortunately, uh, your father passed away. He was delicious, though. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, you said that. <laughs> he, he, was a, okay. he was a baddie in, was a baddie in James Bond as well, was he not? Was he? I don't know. Octopus? So. Maybe. Mm. Maximilian Shell? I don't know. Um, was it? uh, it's garbage. Uh, it's garbage in space. Hot, hot mess garbage in space. Um yeah. I watched uh, I watched Blade Runner again uh, as a palate really? cleanser, the 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 uncut version. So this is the final the final cut, I think it's called, which final is cut, yeah. um, which is uh, Ridley Scott's approved final final yeah. cut. Um, so that great. doesn't have all the voiceovers and no things. none no voiceover no nothing exposition. No none of that. Um, they don't advertise for people like me in the newspaper. That's where I am. A newspaper, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I watched uh, Venom. Oh, well, I, I watched that. I quite liked it. I liked it. I it was all right. And uh, Tom Hardy was a bit mm, in it, but I liked Venom. 
thought he was funny. I don't think Tom Hardy was a probably. Oh, I think Venom is Tom Hardy. Uh, what's that? <laughs> I think Venom's actually played by Tom Hardy. But I think it's, he it's his voice, voice for both. Yeah. Well, does not His voice, yeah. I, I think she's saying it wasn't. Really great. I mean, why? I why liked it, Hardy? but I, I did think the casting of Tom Tom Hardy was a bit odd because Tom Hardy to me is Bean. <laughs> Bain, uh, he's a kind of. Uh, I always imagine the the Venom guy to be a bit more weedy than Tom Hardy's about to. Yeah, him. he plays him like he's weedy though. It does play him like he's weedy, yeah. Mm-hmm. But he looks like he would have just gone next door and smashed that guy's guitar anyway. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, um, I, I think Tom Hardy always lifts anything that he's in. Yeah. Did you ever watch Peaky Blinders? No, I've not seen that. No, is he in that? Uh, yeah, he's in it. He's, he's brilliant, and it really lifts the scenes when he's <clears> in those. In that, he's brilliant. Um, he was great in the uh, Bronson, Rock and Roller, the guy Guy Ritchie one. Yeah, Bronson's fantastic. That was one of his first roles. Good. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. Yeah. yeah, it's great in that. There's an there's an Australian movie which which uh, I used to get mixed up with that, which is a uh, Chopper. And that's a great movie as well. That's a great so, movie with um, uh, Eric Banner. Eric Banner. Uh, that was fantastic first movie. Well. movie. Fan- mm-hmm. just, it's mm-hmm. such, I've seen that movie, I don't know, maybe four or five times. Yeah, uh, I've seen it loads of times as well. It's such a good yeah. movie. Um, but Bronson's, Bronson's just as good. Bronson yeah, Bronson's is just good, but it's a very, very kind of similar story. Bronson was the, the director that directed Drive. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's the same director. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Is it is that a Danish? Is he Danish? Director of Drive. He's done some. He's done some crazy movies recently. Though, like uh, Neon. Oh, God, Neon something. This winding Riffin? Oh, that's him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He did very Valhalla, hard. Right? Quite an arty. Pusher it's trilogy. A great film for Lara Lara. Um, okay. Cool. He did do Bronson, didn't he? I he did, yeah. He did. I did. Um, okay. Uh, I watched uh, Lucy, which is uh, Luke Basson. Um, mm. It's okay. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, there's a fair it's amount of action in it. It didn't it's feel like a. Yeah, it didn't feel like a Luke Besson film, mm-hmm. uh, which I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's the first time I've seen it. Uh, I thought uh, Scarlett Johansson was great in it. Uh, is it Scarlett Johansson? She, she did a terrific Scarlett. run of films um, that year. She did her. She yeah, was in that's a, a good one. Avengers movie. Yeah. She was in that. Remember that Under the Skin? That movie? Oh, yeah. Was that that year as well? That was that year as well. She had a really good run that year now of, of fantastic films. Yeah, I liked it. I thought it was, uh, it's an interesting premise. Um, yeah, I know. He, he, he talks about, um, in the the, the uh, trivia part in IMDb, he talks about, he goes, I know there's no scientific basis for any of this stuff. He said, I just wanted something that would give me a jump for a good action movie. And I think, mm-hmm. <laughs> I think, it, did, I think it did exactly that. Um, Absolutely. I like the pay payoff. I like the, the payback as well at the end. I think it's quite underrated um, as well. That movie. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think I think it deserves a sequel because I mean it kind of lent it kind of left itself open for a sequel. I think, mm-hmm. uh, although you could argue that she becomes her because <laughs> um, yeah. she's everywhere. Um, spoilers. Spoilers. Um, if you haven't seen a five year old movie. Um, What's going on? Well, you hadn't. Well, I hadn't. No, exactly. <laughs> That's true. Um, Just saying. I know. Uh, yeah, it's good. Good action sequences. Um, and some interesting kind of special effects as well. Like the, the, the bit where she's on the plane and she takes a drink of champagne and... and uh, Morgan Freeman's giving the voiceover about the, the cell starts to reject... It's host yeah. because it's getting too 
aggressive or whatever. Oh. And then she's like, Woo! she just turns to dust. And then she starts like munching down on that blue stuff. Um, yeah. We've been talking about watching that again recently. Oh, yeah? Because I would watch it again. That movie too. Yeah, yeah, I would watch it again. <clears throat> um, I wasn't entirely sure what to expect from it, though. And again, it's one of those things where what, what rating is that movie? Is that 12? Maybe. See, I think it. Yeah, it's the same as uh, the same as Venom. Venom is like a yeah, it's a fourteen A over here. Um, mm -hmm. Venom, I think, could have been a higher rating, and then mm -hmm. did it maybe get a bit more blood in it? And not that you need blood or whatever, but it just it, it would have made it a bit more realistic. Whereas with mm -hmm. PG thirteen, they could only use one the one F word, which yeah. I always always find funny. It's like oh, and here comes the F word. Um, and then the last movie we watched was uh, our Friday night movie, which was uh, do Dwayne watch, the Rock. Do you, watch your, do you watch your Friday night movies in your cinema? Oh yeah, well, oh yeah, good. good. Oh yeah, no, no, you gotta have like a special kind of, you know. We sit down and we Absolutely. order pizza, and then we sit down there with a beer, pizza, popcorn. Uh, no, 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 pizza's enough. Just a pizza. So we have our meal down there. Mm -hmm. uh, so we watched uh, Skyscraper, which is on Netflix. Oh, this is what we watched. Have you never seen it? No. Uh, um, do you know what I mean about it being <laughs> overblown? Uh, uh, yeah. So I I have a soft spot for Universal Pictures. Like I, I can, I don't know, I, I like them. I, I think... I think they, they, they usually pick good things. Skyscraper was just nuts, though. It was just it's crazy. Over the I top. I like it, though. It's kind of um, a little bit diehardish. but It's a bit diehard, but really Towering Inferno as well. Terror, it was aye, a, kind of a bit of both. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. There's another movie it was kind of similar to as well. Um, I haven't seen San Andreas. So that's that's I on think, the, that's on the back of the list as well. I think it's by the same production company because I think it might both be. balls out like crazy yeah. action sequences that would you know yeah. you're just like he's never gonna make that oh it made yeah that, yeah that there was a bit forward, it, you know there was a there was a good couple of lines and it. it was uh, one where uh, he says uh, if if duct tape doesn't fix it for you you're obviously not using enough duct tape which I thought was funny yeah um because duct tape like that's the, the <laughs> that's the you open it you open a toolbox in canada and that's the first thing looking at is duct tape it's like underneath mm -hmm. that's a hammer and then underneath mm -hmm. that is like all the other tools but the first one is duct tape yeah. so you fix it with duct tape and then you're good to go like it'll fix hockey tape the hockey uh sticks and i fixed it i know i knew i'd truly become a canadian when um Henry had a, a wee bit of a she hit some black ice and and um hit a tree and mm. took a chunk out of the, the, the front bumper and the last car and um, <clears throat> I just happened to have silver duct tape and we had a silver car at the time and of course I duct taped up the, the bumper because it was like kind of flapping like that good as new, it was almost yeah, it was absolutely. almost, mm -hmm. almost flawless do you know the and only that, thing it doesn't work with TV. what's that when kidnappers wrap it around people's Mouths, it doesn't work. It's easily go. I've seen videos. That doesn't work. It's a, it's a fake. Is it? Yeah, unless you wrap it around a full face. Nothing. Do you know that? So duct tape, you you pull it that way is really strong, but you can actually tear it with your fingers. You don't need to. You yeah. don't need to. Any if, you, if you put like a bit of tape going like that across somebody's mouth, it doesn't, doesn't mm -hmm. stick. Doesn't it? No, you got to try to like, wrap it around your head. Because if I've got a because I've got a beard, I would not like to <laughs> rip that rip that sucker off. <laughs> You'd be like, I've like seen in like, forty year old virgin. Forty year old virgin. That's what I was going to say. I <laughs> start swearing at her. Um, yeah, a bit like that. Yeah, the, uh, I I suffer from uh, a fear of heights, uh, as we mentioned as well. But going upstairs and getting nosebleeds. Um, so was, there was there was a couple of scenes in Skyscraper I just couldn't watch, like the bit where he goes out with the duct tape onto the oh, the, the spinny handy thing. That was crazy. 
And it, it and all I could think point? of, all I could think of was the the bit in um, Galaxy Quest where Sigourney Weaver went, "I'm going to kill the writer that put this in." Yeah, there was a documentary about Gal- Galaxy Quest on recently. Was there? Well, it was on here. The best Star one Trek the movie. One of the Sky Channels. Yeah, it was a, quite an in-depth documentary. It must be on the on the DVD extras or something. It's honestly it, that and the Orville is better than Star Trek. Prove me wrong, internet. Freaky. And I'm not talking about Next Generation or the original series. I'm talking about the the Star Trek that we have now, Picard and and Discovery. The new Star Treks. Please send your comments to Jody at superkellybros.com. Um Yeah, so Skyscraper. I thought it was okay. Um, I thought uh, I kind of like the fact that oh, Nev Campbell's in it as well, so that was good. Um, I haven't seen her since. I mean, I know she's been in movies since then, but she was uh, obviously famous for being in Scream. Um, yeah. She turns up as as, uh, as a naval surgeon. She's a bit of an upgrade for her character because um, normally she's just running around with a knife in her hand trying to avoid the ghost face guy. Yeah. Um, it was nice to see her in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it was nice the fact that Dwayne Johnson wasn't the big tough guy that he normally is. He was just this kind of Ex Marine FBI, everyone well, he was a slightly out of shape, you know. Like, he, there was one point where he runs and he's like, he's <laughs> doing a heavy breathing thing, they can all check the pulse. A, still a tough guy, oh, yeah, yeah, uh-huh. but yeah, ex tough guy, ex tough guy, retired, yeah. retired tough guy. Yeah. Although, within about two seconds of seeing uh, the guy coming off the elevator, I was like. Bad guy. Oh yeah. yeah he's the fight he has in the in the apartment with his, with his friend was oh. pretty good. Yeah. But it's kind of it's quite um it's quite um almost un choreographed, you know, it's quite it's like wild because yes. they're just using everything to smash oh. each other with kind of thing. Yeah. It's a good good fight scene. Yeah, it is a good fight scene that one. Yeah. Uh actually probably the best fight scene in the movie. Because there's not really that many no. Fight, fight you know, scenes. It, it reminded me of the fight scene uh, at the start of Total Recall with Sharon Stone and Arnie. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, the kind yes. of domestic a domestic fight scene. You know, yeah. Other, yeah, the other thing top it... five domestic type uh, fight scenes. The other one that bring, <laughs> springs to mind is um, Kill I'm Bill. I'm not going to be ignored. <laughs> the <laughs> ultimate fight scene. <laughs> Kill Bill one. Shoruken. Oh yeah, um, Kill Bill one. Yeah. Oh, in the trailer. Yeah. No, the, oh, no, the domestic the fight scene, the, the, the mum, yes, uh-huh. in the house. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and if, and if you want to, if you want to uh, talk to me about this in twenty years' time, come look me up. Aye. That, that bit. Come yeah. get me. Aye, come aye. get me. Yeah. <clears throat> I would love um, that to happen. That to be the kill boy in real life. <laughs> no, the, the... you walk in, you got to like hit people <laughs> over the head with pans. Uh, uh, no, I'd love it. I'd love <laughs> Kill Bill Three to be that. You know, that was mm. what it was. All oh, right, Uma Thurman as she is now, because she probably be about ah, twenty years old. And that wee girl must be like twenty. Hmm? When did Kill Bill come out? God, two thousand and three. So we get another three years. So twenty third, twenty twenty three, and then you can have your part three, six or seven. Yeah, oh, yeah, that'd be that'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Cool. Shall we? Uh, shall we talk news? Yes. Um, should we talk Star or well, uh, Disney first, and then we'll leave the best for yeah. last. Okay. Uh, Mandalorian got a release date for season yeah. two, uh, October thirtieth. Um, so that's good. Um, I'm excited to see. Has... Show me the baby. <laughs> the poster has um, Baby Yoda on it. Yeah. I, I, as the meme says, I am Star Wars now. I wonder how that's. I wonder how season two is going to go. So, because season one was so good, I I'm, just hope they build. I hope they build on it. Hope it's, I, you know, I'm hoping they do that. The 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 lone wolf and the cub thing. I think that'd be really cool to see them in like fight sequences together. 
Uh, More like hand, you know, handing off to each other. Okay, cool. Just feel as if they've kind of done that. I, I hope it's got a different tone. Every oh, season's got a different tone, a different you know, oh, maybe. Yeah. flavor to it. Yeah. Um, but not, well, not far away from, now. Nah, not far away from season one, but I just hope every season's got a kind of <laughs> something. And so a shock is it? Seasons as well. Hope they keep it. Oh yeah, that'd be tight. good actually. Yeah, nice and tight. You know, three and, that's and, it. Yeah. three and done. They don't uh, overstretch it. You know, mm. that would be good actually. Then it gets I mean, crap. It's the same as uh, Father Ted. There was only two or three seasons of that. He died though. No, well, he died shortly after wrapping the, the final. They, they said that was it. They weren't going to do any more seasons, and then he died after it. But um, no, yeah, but so yeah, he. Anyway. Uh, no. Well, there's only two seasons of Faulty Towers, twelve episodes. That is. Uh, mm-hmm. Um. So sometimes it, it's Ricky, best to, to do these things. Ricky Gervais has got that that mentality. Yeah. That because of Faulty Towers, he does two and done, mm-hmm. or he'll, he'll do two and a special and done. You know. Yeah. And I think that's a good idea. Just come up with a new character, because you can still use the same people. I mean, it, you know, mm-hmm. it's still him. He's he's been in, you know, Derek, uh, Extras, The Office, um, the Life, Dead Like Me, um, Life After Death, Life After Death, um, that one. So you can always have different situations, and it, yeah, I don't know. You can pigeonhole yourself into coming up with like. Crazy, crazier and crazier situations for those characters, whereas you can just like anyway, it doesn't matter. Analyzing things here. Um, anyway, Mandalorian. Yeah, Mandalorian. Uh, Ashoka Tano Tano is yeah, in it. Uh, season two. Is Cara Dune coming back? Cara Cynthia. Yeah, I'm assuming she will. Yeah. Uh, I think she will. Yeah, I think be. that. I think they're the, the kind of that's the, the a kind of band of brothers and sisters mm-hmm. now. Type thing. Do you think Mayweather will make a reappearance? I don't know. That'd be good. Because mm-hmm. he's got he's obviously got a score to sell with uh, Mandalorian. Well, I think that, as in the, the gang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I, th- I think they'll they will. But I think that'd be good if they were they caught wind of where he was and they mm-hmm. they want revenge, you know. Yeah. But but they they're locked they're locked in that prison. Yes, at they the, have to break out of the prison. At the end of that, at the end of that yeah. episode. Yeah. Well, who knows? Um, good, so I'd, I'd like that if they, they, they meant it again. Yeah. I mean, that episode so much. Yeah, that's a great episode. Um, there's not many bad episodes in that season. I mean, there's a couple of weaker episodes. Um, mm-hmm. like the Gunslinger one is a bit... Mm. Um, but yeah, the rest of them are great. Like that one where the, the, he has to... He has to barter with the Jawas. Yeah. <laughs> All they going is egg, egg, egg. Yeah. First time I saw that one, I wasn't sure about it, but you know, it's, it's a great episode. It really it's is. A fantastic episode. Um. So, uh, did you buy Mulan? Did you Did you spend your thirty five dollars Canadian on no. uh, Mulan? Did you thirty five dollars? Thirty five dollars Canadian. Twenty yeah. pounds here. Twenty pounds. Nineteen ninety nine here. I think we do this all the time. It's the same price. I know. I know. But anyway, okay. <laughs> yeah. So uh, neither did we. No. First it's, of all, it's getting good reviews. I'm a fan. So uh, is it? I, uh-huh. I was reading the BBC website, the BBC, and uh, they were saying the v- reviews were mixed on Milan. Well, right, right into that was it 82 percent, I think, or something. Oh, is it? Well, that's higher than uh-huh. uh, that Beyonce one. Black is king. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Well, anyway, don't worry about uh, buying it because you'll get it for free in December because it's going to be free from December 4th. Mm-hmm. One. Yeah, I, do you know the thing about it, though, is I, I do feel like if you want to support cinema and support movies and support the art, you, we probably should buy it for 20 it is worth it, you know. It's a it's less than a cinema ticket for family, really. Yeah. There's that part of me, you know, but there's other part of me that's like, would it? Would it would but I mean, uh, I see it in the cinema anyway. Okay, so Black is King gets a five point four out of ten on um, Rotten Tomatoes, mm-hmm. and uh, Mulan gets a five point six. 
Right. Uh, not Rotten Tomatoes, IMDb. Sorry. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, Rotten Tomatoes. Um, um, Mulan. Mulan. Yeah, Mulan gets a 79%. So that's fresh ish, I think. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So, um, the reason why I'm comparing it to Black is King, so that, was a, that was the last big release that um, uh, Disney Plus had. There's not been many, let's face it. No, exactly. Yeah. So, Black is King got a 98% um, in Rotten Tomatoes. Hmm. Yeah, there's not been many. But, no. um, and how yeah, to I, I think we will watch it. We were going to watch it on, on Friday, but I got voted down for some reason. Danny was like, I've seen the trailers, oh. I didn't like it. But yeah, but um, I did fancy it. Hmm. And we will watch it. I think we'll yeah. watch it this week, actually. I think it, um, some people have been complaining because uh, it, it it's one of those movies that, that needs that kind of epic big screen yeah, Feel. exactly. So I think we'll watch it here. Yeah. Um, also, once you pay for it, you can watch it as many times as you want. Is that right? Mm -hmm. You kind of, you don't own it, but you, know, you own it. And there it come as you own it. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. No, I think we'll I'm assuming it'll be a non-transferable in perpetuity license to watch Milan. I think that'll be yeah. something along those lines. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm not. It's yeah. just a shame this has happened, you know, for it because mm -hmm. it probably would have been a, a big, definitely a big deal in the cinema and stuff. Um, yeah, I, I mean, it, it was the same as uh, I mean, Tenet, um, the US box office debut for that. So the, the, they had an opening weekend in the US uh, mm -hmm. and they got $20 million opening weekend. Which is clearly not what Warner's was hoping for this movie. They were hoping for a, a much, much larger opening. In fact, they were well, they were hoping that it was going to be a, like a you know a billion dollar movie. I'm going to, I mean, every company I guess wants a billion dollar movie, but uh -huh. um, it's clearly not. Tenet, happening. You know, I, I, I know it's uh, because of the pandemic and people are you know a bit edgy about going back to cinemas and stuff, but mm. I don't think Tenet would have been a billion dollar movie. It's too no. it's too out there. It's too um too complicated for people, you know. Mm -hmm. And Chris Nolan always uh, gives people a bit of respect about their intelligence, you know, mm -hmm. for, for his movies. He doesn't really ex well he, he explains things in a really good way in his movies are good 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 kind of storyteller in that sense but um, it's a complicated story it's a com yeah. it's not a mainstream movie by any chance it's a pretty much an art house movie that, that that's that he he manages to do these kind of art house movies that are for the you know for the, the do you think he's trying to be Kubrick for the many Oh, definitely, he's trying to be an Arthur Kubrick. Mm. He's trying to, he's trying to create myths the way that Kubrick did, mm. um, and he's trying to create puzzles and he's in and uh, mystery, the hundred percent. And this one is the most one that people will talk about for years, mm. because okay. Inception, you know, you could get your head around Inception, but this one. I don't know if I described it in the last show. I don't know um, if you, no, no, you didn't. I don't know if we spoke about it. Did we? It's no. basically, I was trying to explain it to Evelyn, and I, and I actually couldn't. And then I thought, so did you it just way. watch it yourself? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it's basically a, the story is going this way, mm -hmm. right? But halfway through, you realise the story is actually going that way as well, and it crosses paths. Right. Right, uh, and that's where the backwards stuff comes in, because the stuff that's going this way, mm -hmm. all the backwards stuff that's happening this way is coming from this. Yeah, if you if you get me, 
Yeah. Um, and it is a mind f <laughs> big time. It is a it is a thinker, okay. and I think um, going to see it again, which I probably will. I mean, a, a lot of the thing. There's a lot of kind of uh, ex, exposition in it. Exposition. Mm-hmm. Talking about um, explaining stuff, but the the dialogue's a wee bit kind of muffled at times. But Benny. Yeah, but he does that in quite a lot of his movies, though, and a, a lot of people complain about it. But he does he does that where like there's a there's a bit uh, in it, the music's too loud. The mix is the mix is wrong. The, the music's too loud. Yes. All the explosions are too loud. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, because Inception. In a few movies, definitely. Mm-hmm. I think it's Michael Caine is talking. Oh no, it's no, it's uh, Interstellar. Michael Caine's talking. Yeah, and Hans yeah. Zimmer scores like blah, 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 over the mm-hmm. top of him, mm-hmm. and he's trying to say something. You're like, eh, what? And and for a movie like that, it's really important that you hear what this, yeah. you know, saying and explaining stuff, and you know. Yeah. Um, but he's, but yeah, he's so, probably, but what he's probably saying because it's Jessica Chastain, I think he's talking to. He's probably saying, "And I told them you were only supposed to blow the bloody toes off." Probably. But he, um, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is my impersonation of Sean Connery. Brilliant. Thanks. Thank you. Um, Showstopper. Yeah. So, tenant. And I, I, don't, I don't know what it will do worldwide, but uh, I mean, we could find out. That's that's easy. Box office audio. Um, that's only its first week, though, in, in the US. It is, yeah. Um, oh yeah, the new mutants came out. Oh yeah. Uh, the movie three years in the making. I know. Finally they finally they wrapped up in two thousand seventeen. Mm-hmm. And it's taken them three years to, to get the movie I think, out. Was, I think there was talk of reboots and things, but yeah. they ended up not doing the reboots. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, the and director then, was like, oh, because because it was done before the, the merger of merger, the takeover, the acquisition of 20th Century Fox, which is now 20th Century Studios. Um, mm-hmm. before they had the acquisition of that. Uh, and then when they got acquired, they were like well, now Marvel owns everything, so what do we do now? And they're like, well, we should do reboots, and then they hummed and hemmed and hawed, and then eventually they're like, eh, just release it. And that's that all that to have it to delayed that long, apparently. I don't quite get it. Maybe they were shooting a Netflix documentary. I think it's meant to be okay as well, you know. Meant to be pretty good. Sorry, that was a Maybe bad joke thing. about Sorry. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Sorry. reaching things. Um, uh, Tenet... Uh, has made. Oh, is it is it Tenet because it? Hang on a minute. Have I cracked this? Is it is it called Tenet because it's a palindrome? It's the same forwards as it is backwards. Wow, I don't think MD's ever said that. Okay, you heard it here first, folks. You're right. You're right. Mic drop. Uh, it's made 146 million 200,000 worldwide. That's all right. It was released in 2,810 theatres this weekend. And okay, it's still under the pandemic PG going. You know, PG 13. Too bad. Yeah. He'll yeah. we'll never make its money back, probably, but I don't know how much he's. he's <sighs> makes these things for, but they look bloody glamorous. You know, he's like, he's pretty, he's pretty much doing James Bond movies, you know, a lot of the times when he's doing these things. Um, Do you know what means? That type of scale. I, I, I did Google it, but I can't remember. Uh, a principle or belief, especially one of the main principles of a religion or philosophy. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. So, and it's a palindrome. Uh, Chris Nolan, Wikipedia. Oh, Ludwig Göransson did the music for it. Yeah, he did, and it, and it, I think he is brilliant. He did the Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. Um, he, he did something else as well. Well, he produced all of. Uh, he did the um, Creed. Yes, and he did the he did the new Black Panther. Predator, Black I, think. Panther. I think he did the new Predator one as well. Yeah, um, I think he won an Oscar for the Black Panther. 
music. Um, he's really okay. good. I watched a documentary about him. He's, he, he does yeah. the, you know, Childish Gambino, mm-hmm. um, the Donald Glover, the music project thing. He produces that's, all that. That's how he got uh, this. That's how he got the Mandalorian because uh, Donald Glover was talking to John Favreau. Ah, uh, right. There you go. It's not what you know, it's who you know. But yeah, um, he's brilliant. Really, really good. He also did the music for Central Intelligence as well. Uh, yeah. There's a great documentary about him on uh, YouTube. And he's talking about, you know. I think I've seen that, yeah. It's really good. Oh, he also produced Heim's debut EP. Hmm. There you go. They're a good be band. Uh, the, the three girls. The oh, yeah, that's good. I did not know that. No, brilliant. Um, I've got their first album. Yeah, the first album's really good. Yeah, it is. Uh, she, they, they sound a bit uh, Fleetwood Mac. Like one of them uh-huh. sounds like Christy McVeigh, the other one sounds a bit like uh-huh. Stevie Nixie type filter. Uh-huh. Um, shall we talk uh, Mario? Oh yes. So I lost my I lost my shizzle. <laughs> I did. I, oh, I, I, I never I never I never knew about it, right? I didn't know. And um but somebody posted up a thing in Facebook and, and said, Whoa, yeah, you know, this has just happened, Nintendo Direct. And I'm like scrambling for a you know, to get on YouTube to watch it. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, the first thing I heard about it was uh, somebody posted up a link to a Polygon article about Mario Kart Home Circuit, and I was like, "What? That's nuts!" So it's basically uh-huh. a real-world Mario Kart. So you get these, uh-huh. you buy these little cars, uh-huh. and then you they, they've got little cameras on them. They're, they're RC cars, and you control yeah. them. And you and it's the same thing as the, the Labo it. stuff. Yeah, it's the same thing as the Labo stuff. So you get like these cardboard uh, checkpoint gates. Yep. And you set them up, and there's, there must be like an AR camera inside it, uh, and mm-hmm. it detects what the checkpoints are, so that you know that who's winning and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. I, 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 mean, I mean, who's doing Absolutely. that? Absolutely brilliant. Meanwhile, meanwhile, Sony and Microsoft are giving it all a thing. Look how many triangles we can push through our mega flop uh, exactly. process. Exactly. Our, and they're going like. In games over here, guys. And Nintendo thinking out of the box, having fun. Brilliant. Yeah. Utterly, utterly brilliant. Yeah. Um, you can get, you basically get uh, two carts. You can buy either Mario or Luigi. Um, it's £100 here, 99, 99, 99. And, um, but if you pre order, it's 89.99. So you get your, your cart, your four gates. Um, and a bit. <clears throat> um, a charger for the for the cart and stuff. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, it just it looks amazing. Um, totally awesome. Total Christmas list tick. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I'll need I'll need to check out the price over here. My guess is it's probably one hundred and thirty dollars then. Yeah. With me. Um, yeah. So if you they... order it, you get you know it's cheaper. Yeah, so it was part of um, a Mario thirty five. So Mario's thirty five. This is his first uh, first foray into. I guess it's. I guess it must be Super Mario Brothers, like the <clears throat> similar to that logo there. Uh, that first one came out. Um, so that was like eighty five then. Um, mm-hmm. So they announced that um, as a spe- as a special. Hmm? Is it going way back to Donkey Kong? We won't do that one. Well. No, no, I think it's the I think it's the, the when they released Super Mario Brothers, the NES game. When it was called which was first time because it was called Jumpman, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh-huh. I, if, I think it was a carpenter as well in the original one, because he's got a hammer instead of anyway. Um so it, it was a it was a Super Mario special Nintendo Direct presentation. So they announced that they announced Smash Brothers, which you and I it's lost on us, Smash Brothers. I don't know. There's other bits and pieces in there. They've, there's also a, an online battle royale as well. So you you uh, go through the original levels of Super Mario. Oh, the other oh, one. Yeah, that looks good as well. Mm-hmm. That looks good as well. Um, That's free for 
for uh, Nintendo Online. Yes. Uh huh. Like so the, that's free. Like the Tetris ninety nine, isn't it? Pretty much. Uh, yes, exactly. Yeah, but you can send bad. So it's kind of similar as well to um, Doctor Mario as well, because you can send the bad guys that you defeat to other people's screens. Ah, right, okay. That's so like fun, man. Yeah, so you can basically like screw people over and go, like, "Oh, there you go." Yeah, you have to do that there. yeah, that sounds mad. Um, they announced as well that uh, the original Super Nintendo All Stars is free, um, in the Super Nintendo uh, Virtual Console uh-huh. as well. So you've you've played that. You played I that this week. When oh, I, I have not yet to play it. I was super busy um, this week. I haven't had a chance to, but I'm dying to go back to that. Uh, you know, it's the same. I mean, it's just upgraded versions of the original three yeah. games, plus the lost levels and yes. uh, which is basically Doki Doki, Doki um, Panic. Um, yeah. From the original. Um, oh no! So sorry, there's the lost levels, which is Super Mario Brothers Two, which was all the levels that they couldn't do, and then it was Super the Super Mario Two in the West. So the Lost Levels is what Super Mario 2 was released in Japan. It's harder levels. Um, right. And then uh, Super Mario Brothers 2 was a re- rebadged version of Doki Doki Panic, and that was released in the West. Um, yeah. And then Super Mario Brothers 3, and is that it? I think that's it. Uh-huh. I think that's it. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, it's, it's as you would have seen it on the Super Nintendo, but it's which is great. Is he having that? The, the Super NES? You know, stuff. Great. Donkey Kong Country's on there now. There, there is one stuff. There is one thing, though. Where's Axley? I want Axley. Axley. Um, so there's that. Uh, they also announced a special uh, LCD color version of Game & Watch. Which looks great. That looks like a nice collector's <laughs> item, doesn't yes. it? Yes. Uh, which is a standalone version of the original Super Mario Brothers game. Uh-huh. Um, that's fantastic. But in a handheld, and it's got a watch form. built in. It's got a watch built in, and it's also got the original ball juggly thing. Yeah, that's right. It looks like the thing. Yeah. And they also announced what's the other one as well? They also announced a remastered whew, Mario sixty four, oh, Super Mario yes. Sunshine. Oh yes. And Super Mario Galaxy. Oh yes. Enhanced. And a music player as well, which is eh, whatever. Uh, an enhanced version for the Switch for each one of those as well. So it's it's sixteen nine uh, aspect ratio. I think you can do the four three aspect ratio as well. I, Super Mario sixty four <laughs> does have black bits at the side. They couldn't get it full. All right, okay. But other two are. But it's enhanced um, as well. So what did Jody do? Booked it straight away. Immediately. Which is just as well, because a lot of these are only available for a limited time. They've done a, they've done a Nintendo, they've done a yeah. Disney, so until you can't March. get some of these until beyond thirty first of March next year. So, oh I'm gonna, I'm gonna definitely pre order the the um, remastered Mario sixty four, Mario Sunshine, and Super Mario Galaxy because I think uh, that Super Mario Sunshine is. Probably one of the most underrated games, uh, along with that. Uh, um, what's his name? Alex Hatcher thing that I can never remember the name of. Oh yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Game. Did you have on, a on the... GameCube back in the day? Yeah. I well, do... have never played Super Mario Sunshine. Yes, you have. I have never played it, and I cannot wait. Who did I play? Did I not play that no. at your house? Super nope. Mario Sunshine. I've never played, never played it. Really? Yep. I bought a GameCube mm-hmm. not that long ago, yeah, and it. um, and uh, I bought Super Mario oh. Sunshine, and it would not play. Oh no I am, way! I am dying to play that. It's a great game. And and the the, the Hatcher one you were talking about yeah. as well. Yeah, but that's not on this. But Alex yeah. Hatcher. Let me just do Alex it. Hatcher. Yeah, the Sega game. Um, mm. But yeah, I am absolutely gagging for that. And you never mentioned the, the 3D one. Billy Hatcher. Coming on. Billy Hatcher. Billy Hatcher. Billy Hatcher. Billy Hatcher. Because it's Alex. I always get that wrong. Billy Hatcher. You never mentioned uh, the Super Mario 3D world as well. 
Yeah, I didn't go to that, but yeah. Uh-huh. Sorry, or oh, sorry. Yes. Um, the 3D world, which was the, uh, the Wii U? Wii, was it just Wii U. Mm-hmm. Wii U. Uh, mm-hmm. That's coming out. That's the one where you, 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 you turn him into a little cute cat costume. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wanted to play that game so, so bad. <laughs> I was like, that's so cute. Uh, that game, it. by the way, is absolute dynamite. Oh, is and it? It's utterly dynamite. It's one of the best Mario games I've ever played. And also, uh, it's got an extra thing the Bowser. It's got plus Bowser's Kingdom or something. Oh, okay. There's an a extra oh. part to it. It's exclusive on, on Switch. Well, I'm I'm dying to. Okay, well, I'm going to buy so, two games then. I'll tell you what, I really want to. Uh, honestly. Dynamite, yeah, absolute dynamite. Do you know, but I cannot wait. It's so exciting. Years ago, Sega decided that they would they would pit a little blue hedgehog against Mario, and their their big thing was Mario is this slow plodding plumber, uh-huh. and Sonic is yeah. this fast thing. People want to go fast. Uh-huh. Who's laughing now? I know. I, Absolutely. I I played I played uh, I had um you know one of those um the, the games that you plug into the TV I had a, a um, master system not a master system um, Mega, Mega Drive. Drive version of it. I've got I've got one of those. So I never played I never played Sonic before. I beat the game in the first sitting. Like I played out through the whole thing, and I'm like I've never done that with Mario. Like I can still get killed picking up the first mushroom in Mario. Mm-hmm. Me too. I did, in fact, when I was playing it. Yeah. What? Yeah. And it's not that the game rips you off. It's just, it's difficult. It's the same as Probotech. There's, oh, by the way, there's a great video as well where the guy deconstructs like the, the 6502 assembly language for like the Kerami code, you know, the up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, A, B, A, B, or B, A, B, A. Uh, can't even remember the Kerami code. Um, and. Uh, he dissects it and and like he shows you all the cheats and everything, gives you the like, game genie cheats in case you want to try this at home. Oh, really? Yeah, it's, it's fascinating stuff. But it, but he's talking about like Probotector. They give you three lives, but with a cheat, you get thirty lives. And he goes, it's probably still not enough. Probotector's <laughs> hard. Almost. That that remake they did was absolute oh, garbage. S- the the super- 3D thing, the 3D one. I never played it. It was out last year or something. It was absolutely rubbish. Shocking. Same as Yars Revenge. Yeah, they they remade Yars Revenge, and it was. Oh, they should they're not real shit. These things, yeah. Just want to pump them out. Beloved, some money. Beloved things. But, Anyways, yeah. that's. Sorry, what were you going to say? Sorry. Well, I was just going to say that that uh, you need to get those games. Yeah. I mean, they're a must. The the, the super the Super Mario um, All Star 3D thing. The uh, 3D oh, world yeah. is phenomenal. Yeah. And uh, Mario Kart. Yeah. Yeah. The Mario Kart's a bit take, of a big ask, but. Take, take my money. Oh, I know. Um, I think the Mario Kart home circuit thing might be a bit too rich for me, but um, luckily, though, it does look like it's going to fit in a fairly. Like most people don't have houses, like, you know, that you yeah, see Xboxes and stuff. Me. But. <laughs> Yeah. I, don't know where put my right enough. I don't know where to put mine either. I'd have to no. maybe go downstairs or something. I don't know. I'd do it down yeah. here. Um, but yeah, I, I was totally blown away. Like it just came out, and as you said, it came out of nowhere. And I'm like, what the hell is this? It's all of a sudden, it's all this Mario yeah. stuff. And I'm like, oh, what? 35? Who are you? Um, you know. Great stuff. Um, anyway, I think that's about it. I think we should end on a high. Uh, there's a couple more stories here, but I can forget about them. Uh, yeah. They're not really that important. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go and pre-order uh, the 3D All-Stars, uh, Super Mario 64, Mario Sunshine, and Super Mario Galaxy. Go and 100%. Get, uh, um, do it. Do it. Um, do it. Yeah. Um, you want to talk about anything else? or No, no, I'm fine. Cool. Thanks. All right, well, that, that about does it for us then. Um, if you want to go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and notification bell, you'll get timely reminders anytime that we uh, post a video up. Um, and of course, as always, if you could smash that like button, 
uh, and share the video. It really does help the channel out uh, when you do that. And if you're listening to this in the podcast, uh, hello. Hello there. Hello there. Uh, and uh, if you give us five stars on, on Spotify, tune in or, or any of these services, uh, that would be awesome as well. Because, again, you get promoted and, and more people find out about us. So that would be great as well. So, yeah, thank you all for watching and listening. And uh, I guess we'll catch you in the next one. Uh, see Thanks, you later. Thanks, guys. Bye.